everyone, Daniel Kerr here. Um, so welcome to another video uh, from the Snow Metal University. Now here's the deal. I'm going to show you, uh, we're up close and personal. Um, I'm going to show you how I use reference tracks and what I'm looking for when I run them through a spectrum analyzer. Okay, but before we do that, I want you to know that these last few videos, okay, this is the way I got my setup set up. I've got my uh, live here and it's going through my sound card. And the sound card is actually going directly into this cassette player. So if my voice and the vocals sound a little crispy, that's why, okay? Um, I'm going to be using this cassette player to um, master, well, I'm not gonna be using it to master, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to be using it to add some tape compression um, as I move into mastering my um, EP that I have coming out on Tech Obsessed Records out of the UK. Now. Here is the deal, is that um, I'm not really sure how to use a um, tape player for this purpose. I've always used tape, um, two and a half inch tape in a large reel-to-reel -reel, um, in large studios, okay? And not only that, but I'm not a mastering engineer. So even though uh, we have recorded the tape in the past, um, recording to tape specifically for the tape compression is kind of strange. Do I uh, compress and then go through the tape? Um, anyway, I'll talk all about that. Right now, I want to talk about referencing tracks, okay? I'm going to use uh, Vaxingo Span. It's a free re uh, reference. Um, it's uh, a free <laughs> um, spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to run these tracks through um, the spectrum analyzer. And these are tracks that I really love, that I think are mastered amazingly. And I'm going to run them through. I'm going to show you guys what they look like. Um, in the analyzer and show you what I look for um, when I'm doing my own mix uh, and to try to match the frequencies, make sure, you know, if there's some serious spikes on the spectrum analyzer, I have a terrible room and I also mix a lot in headphones. So it, it's very, very valuable for me to be able to use the spectrum analyzer. And I want to show you what these tracks look like. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are. I've got an instance of live open and I have um, tons of tracks here and I have all of the reference tracks that I'm going to be used and demonstrating in track 11. And that's because when I open up Span, the graphic interface, I want to be able to see everything that's going on here and I want to be able to explain it to you. So the tracks that I have is I have uh, the Thrill Seekers Hydra, right? And the reason why I have these tracks picked is because they're all mastered very, very well. And also because it goes from old school, this is probably 10 years or, or something old, right up to Churn, which is pretty pretty new. So uh, I have the Thrill Seekers, Hydra. I have uh, Collapsus by Blizzard. I have um, Seven Lions, Tyven. And then I have Arnie Location and Churn Control uh, Controls. And both of those are uh, Control, excuse me. Both of these are fairly new, I'd say, within the last year. Um, uh, Seven Lions is going to be about six years old, five or six years old. And um, Blizzard goes back a little further. And Thrill Seeker, here's the, the interesting thing about the Thrill Seekers, is that their track is mastered very quiet. You can see that in here. <clears throat> All right. Um, the tape that I'm using to record my voice and to record this entire demo, by the way, that I mentioned earlier, um, this is like the third time I've recorded over it. So it's gonna, it might sound really crispy. Uh, I want to see, I want to push these, this cassette as far as I can go. And I want to try to use that to really get a nice vintage feel when I master my tracks. Okay. So uh, if, if it's not the sound quality you're used to, yeah, well, well too bad. Okay. So I'm going to crack open Span and I'm going to play the first track, right? And I want you to see the old mastering style. Okay. Right here we have basically an EQ and you're going to see the, the peaks um, as it's going. And this is RMS, which uh, basically means that you're not looking at peaks like you're looking at decibels, you're seeing an average that continues to evolve as the music plays. So here we're going to play the Thrill Seekers, Hydra, now listen. You can see they have a high pat or a high cut right here, completely cut off, okay? That's to keep all the crispiness out. And you can see that we have a pretty good amount of space in the, in the, in the uh, mid highs here with a um, a pretty good amount of boost here uh, where the snares and stuff are at and you can see that they use a hollowing out around four to five hundred hertz and that's how they get rid of the mud and you can see that the bases peak around 50 hertz 55 hertz okay 
So we'll go to the next one. Um, this one's going to be quite a bit louder, right? Now, the Thrill Seekers and Blizzard both are uh, decent trance albums, right? And, and trance kind of uh, shaped the way for modern electronic mastering in, in style. And then, of course, it has, uh, has completely evolved since then and taken on a lot of hip-hop and a lot of other things, even rock, and, you know, if you're looking at, like, synth punk and things like that. So the Blizzard one's going to be a little bit louder. It represents more compression, but let's see how it changes between the Thrill Seekers, which looks like this. See that slope there? And the blizzard. Okay, it's more even. Alright? We still see that high cut right there, right? The the bass peaks, right, and the subs are in the 65 range and not in the 55 range. But you can see that there's a shelf right along that uh, mid to mid highs here. And you can see that there's a few transients that are getting through, all right? It's obvious that these are older school mastering engineers, and they uh, really respect their dynamics, okay? Now, here's the seven lines. This marks a huge difference between even the last two, and uh, it's kind of a, maybe a middle school between uh, what was uh, typical 10 or 15 years ago and what is typical now. Now, let's see the, the seven lines. <laughs> There's still a cut here. It's very even, right? Sounds very, very good, okay? This mastering engineer is incredible at using the EQ to make sure that there's not a lot of frequencies that are overlapping. He probably puts um, a spectral analysis on each track or each group of tracks to make sure that that nobody is actually fighting for any space. Let's listen again. It's clipping above zero in the anal analog d domain, right? And uh, that is a symbol that he had it right up to zero in the digital domain and didn't take into um, account what was going to happen when um, we have audio to or digital to uh, analog converters. Now. The next two, these are recent tracks, and these are very, very close to the style of the music that I play. So um, one thing that changes a lot between this Seven Lions track and these two last tracks is that these two last tracks um, are in a genre of Witch House or, or um, Wave that, that makes a huge use, um, makes, makes large use of sidechain compression, okay? Sidechain compression is such um, has made it possible for us to use, it, it doesn't really matter um, if, if a lot of frequencies are fighting for each other. You can have a big washy wall of sound. Um, as soon as that kick drum uh, hits, it's going to duck, right, because of the side chain. So let's listen to Arnie here. <laughs> Now notice what I said, okay, that, that high cut, that high cut is back, as you can see, but you see all this here, all those peaks, look. I think that's stuff that the Seven Lions Mastering Engineer would never uh, allow to happen. However, because of the side chain, everything still sounds full, everything sounds crisp, it doesn't sound muddy at all, and there is also... A dip right here, right around 600 hertz, and it's really dipping. And then, of course, the bass is, uh, is, is really heavy because that's the style, right? Now, now, listen to the churn, it's even more so. It is very much like this last uh, location track, but it is even more exaggerated. Now, watch. See all those transients getting through? Right around 60 hertz, we got a bass boost, and um, you can see what you're looking for. Look at look at the 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 bake the bass peak compared to the high peaks. Watch. See the line here. Bass is up here. It's a good it's a good six decibels lower. All right, 
Let's try this other one. See how the highs are, high, are, are as high as the bass peaks, right? The high peaks are, are huge and it sounds really crisp. This engineer is a better engineer. He had to squeeze loudness out of that and get those highs up. The churn engineer, right, which is probably himself, um, he was allowed to, to just really crank the bass because that side chain compression uh, created space in the frequencies, right? So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compare my own track with these tracks, okay? So I think what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the Seven Lions track because I think it's a good middle of the road. And in the next video, I'm going to crack open one of my projects and I'm going to place it, um, place a, a, um, a span on my master channel right and the um, seven lions um, channel as well and I'm going to a and B go back and forth so that you can see exactly how I use a reference track to try to match up my tracks in the frequency okay so everybody be blessed and I'll see you soon